Uh, we didn't do a sound check though. <laughs> <laughs> That's your fault. Uh, sure. Yep, I'll own that one. Uh, <laughs> Christ. So, how's your volume? <laughs> Uh, hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 144 for Thursday, the 5th of October, 2017. This is a show where two lifelong friends celebrate geek. Hey, and by the way, uh, just so you know, I nailed the intro last week. Last week. Totally nailed it. Nailed it up one side and down the other. <sighs> not this week, though. No. Um, no yeah, there was week. like uh, seven false starts and um, 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 that and stuff. Yeah, and that and stuff. It just sounded like as good as that. <laughs> uh, how you doing, man? Dude, it has been a week. It's been awesome, and I, I, uh, uh, hmm, it's just, it's been, dude. It's it's really been. Yes, um, um, I know that that's man, high high praise for the week. No, well, it exists. It existed. Yeah, pretty, that's, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, dude. I yeah. I don't want to get into to this week. This this week's. Yeah, this week has been a weird week. Um, okay, so I'm just going to cover it real quick. There's plenty of other places to go to hear about all the rotten bullshit that's going on in the world right now. This is not one of them. So Exactly. And that's that's what I was going to say. That's why I'm skipping my weekly recap mm. uh because it dealt with um some of those things. So um mm, yeah. yeah, but it is Thursday now. And Thursdays are amazing because it's ritual misery night and I'm glad to be here, dude. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm surprised to be glad to be here, but I'm definitely glad to be here. <laughs> well, good. Hey, I'm um, glad that you can count on Thursdays. I, I mentioned it in the intro, but it is October, and uh, that does mean one thing. That means um, that means, and I'm going to tell you what that means. I'm going to give you a little hint. That, wait, does it mean that the that, that you're not going to see the sun again for six months? No, 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 no. That didn't happen for a while. Although the snow is probably going to be falling within a week. Oh man. So I see a bottle opener. You see a bottle opener. Yep. And you mentioned that it's October. Ooh, and you have a moss. The uh the giant German style mug. And and I have. And it looks like you have a beer of some sort, which I can only imagine is an Oktoberfest style or at least a fall seasonal. It's it's actually not. This is a this is a Alaskan Breweries pilot series, which is their their limited series. It's and it's not a limited, like, they're only going to make it for 15 years. Like, they make these for, like, six <laughs> months, put it out there, and then they never make it again. Um, okay, so it's it's uh, kind of like a seasonal, but not uh, not exactly. It's like a, yeah, it's a limited edition. I yeah, got you. Yeah, yeah. This is their raspberry wheat, ale brewed with raspberries. Okay. Um, have so you tried it yet? I have not. Well, I've tasted oh. it a while ago, but I was eating, like, really spicy food. So, it, you know, <laughs> um, and I've never tried it with a clean palate. Okay. I'm um, interested to, to see what you think of this. And my challenge to you is that uh, I should have done this last week, but my challenge to you is each each episode this month and next week you have to do two to make up for this week. Um, <laughs> each episode this month we are going to try a new beer. Okay, so, I'm down. So you have to find a new beer in celebration of Oktoberfest because I know your limited beer supply is not going to hold out for too long. But each week let's try a new beer. Okay, yeah, man, I'm down. So I'm going to go ahead and pour this out. We'll pour it in. Pour Don't it pour it. Yeah, yeah, whoa, whoa. That's some beer <laughs> sitting right there. Don't pour it out. Um, so how's the um, how's the head? It's good. It's you enjoying a, your head? It's a, it's, a, it's a pretty good pour. Um, I'm, I might have given a little extra head there. Uh, I might have overdone the head. <laughs> I don't know if you can overdo the head. I, I mean. will. <sighs> and you know... It, Having a full size liter moss like you do, it's very difficult to overdo the head. Yeah. Well, I mean, it didn't pour out, but I do have some very deep head. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it, okay. actually, it actually smells like raspberries, which I mean, I guess that's good. It's better than smelling like grape. Yeah. Yeah. And a, a lot of head actually helps with the aroma. It, it helps you get a lot of the, the profile. How, how's the taste? Um, it's got a, uh, I can definitely taste the berry. Okay. Um, 
I, honestly, I don't like the aroma. Too uh, too fruity, like too sweet. No, it's for too, you, the, it's too bitter. It almost um, it almost almost smells like the after effect of beer. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> it smells like the bottom of the keg. <laughs> mm. Yeah, um, the beer itself. Oh, I mean, it's it's an ale. Um, I'm glad we're doing it for this because I probably wouldn't drink it otherwise. <laughs> it's a it's a little bitter. It's a little bitter. Yeah, well, I mean, you got to have a little bit of biz- bitterness to to balance out all that okay, fruity okay. sweetness, I imagine. Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I got to ask you, man, how yeah. how is my audio compared to last week? Well, I do you, can, do you I can hear you. Has improved at all? I can hear you while I'm talking. Yeah, yeah, which it, is an improvement, right? <laughs> Ask anyone who, who's uh, listened to the last several episodes where the music would keep going and you try to talk and nobody could hear you. Uh, yeah, it's probably it's <laughs> probably an improvement, but I'm not, I'm not going to speak for everybody. Yeah, well, hopefully <laughs> that I have taken just a few tiny dollars and fixed the, uh, the huge audio issue that I've been having. I know I've got cleaner audio from you and it's a lot louder because we, we had messed with some of your gain earlier and some of my gain because it's definitely coming through. Yeah. Well, well, great. Uh, yeah, man. So this is a problem with, with Skype in general and mm-hmm. definitely a problem with podcasts that use Skype. Um, yeah, man. Mixed minus is a thing. <laughs> and if you're a podcaster and you don't know what mixed minus is, you need to look it up or you I've been, need to email. I've been trying your, to, I've been trying to get you to do mixed minus for months now. <laughs> Four days after getting it set up, you're like, yeah. 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 No <laughs> shit. Like look it up or, or email podcast at ritual misery.com and we will help you. Yeah. Um, yeah in fact, if, if you're, if you're listening to this in your podcatcher, there is a link in your show notes for, uh, the, the things that I bought. I spent less than 15 bucks for like complete fixage of, of Skype audio shit. Yeah. So. And, and part of the problem is that you're on an iMac that doesn't have a microphone port. Correct. Yeah, that was yes. like that was one of the big hurdles. It's like, ah, oh, shit. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's that's one of the things. Yeah, very simple solution. It took very little time to fix, and like I said, it was it was pretty cheap. So um, uh, it's probably chat, my geekiest thing this week. Actually. Chat room was saying that the only time they hear anything annoying on this show is when you talk. So well, <laughs> that happens. Um, <laughs> well, <sighs> welcome to my life. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Mike! Uh, yeah. Uh, so I don't know. Did uh, I heard that you got into something much geekier though? Um. Oh, so or much more fun. Like all local. the all the things that I did this week. I when when the Super NES Classic was in, was went on presale, I was pissed because I didn't even get an email. I still haven't gotten an email from Amazon saying it's available for order. Um, yeah. so I designed, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to worry about it. And cause this is the system that I actually want this in the N64 classic. If they ever do that one are the systems that I like, I want. Right. Yeah. Um, and I was like, you know what, if, if I happen to come across one, I, I do, but whatever. Well, we all went out as an office to breakfast last Friday. And at the end of breakfast, I figured, you know what? I'll stop by Best Buy real quick. It's actually on my way to work. Mm. Um, at least that parking lot is, you know? So it must be nice center. to have a Best Buy in your town. Uh, I mean, we got we got two. So, uh, <laughs> not to rub uh, it in. Right, right, right. We also have uh, like three pancake houses right off base. But anyway, so I stop by. I, I drive by Best Buy, and there's a little line. It's like five people long. Fuck it, I'll go ahead and get in line. They should be opening soon. Yeah, they open in like half an hour. I'll stop by there. So I get in line, and I'm talking to people, and they've all got these tickets. I'm like, oh shit, man! Everybody already got their tickets, and blah 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 blah. He comes out, the manager comes out right before 10 o'clock when they opened with a stack of tickets. Apparently, they had gotten several hundred SNES classics. Oh, my God. And I thought these things were going to be limited in supply. Yeah. All the, uh, oh, man. All of the game stops in the area got like 10. But Best Buy got like 200. So I definitely picked one up. Um, I definitely taught my daughter how to play Super Mario World, my my four-year-old. How to play Super Mario World? <laughs> that is a win right there. <laughs> that's that, that, that's it. It's a win. So as I'm playing, okay. So I remember a lot of the stages and stuff like that, and it's really fun to play. And oh my gosh, it is like a lot of fun to play. I don't remember <laughs> how to get to any of the secret places in Super Mario World. You know, the little red dot where you can go two branches. 
I don't remember yeah. any of the branches. I don't remember any oh, of the codes. I, let, I, let me come over. I can help you. Um, I like. I have it. It's been so long since I played it, and of course, I just recently uh, played played through Link to the Past with my emulator. And mm. holy shit, that was that was amazing. That was a blast. I'm glad I did that because that that I started playing other games. Because if I'd got the SNES Classic and I hadn't played A Link to the Past in a while, <laughs> that's all that I would play on that thing, you know? Um, yeah, it's super fun. I think the controllers are not quite as responsive as I would like, but I don't know how true to the original that is or or if that's... It, 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 I don't know if, if my usage of my Xbox 360 controller plugged into my computer on my emulator has skewed mm. my my feeling of how the controller for the SNES class or SNES felt. Yeah. And therefore skewed my opinion of it on the classic, but it does feel like there's a little bit of a controller delay uh, in there. I, and mm. so but they are full-size controllers, which is way better than the than the NES classic that came out. Yeah. Cuz uh, well, I'm I'm just a little bit jealous cuz I I kind of had the same mindset as you. If I if I come across one in the store, I'm probably going to snag one. But I'm not gonna go out of my way. I and, almost uh, I have yet to see one in the wild. I almost got you one just to uh, just for your like Christmas or whatever. And I was like, I don't want to go back. I, I'm not going back there. <laughs> right. So, I don't blame you. So yeah, here, uh, though that would have been awesome. Here's the controller, <laughs> and I've got a, you know full size man hands, right? So when I'm holding so it, you it, say. it actually it's actually like the original it, size. It's really it comfortable. looks exactly like the original controller. Yeah. Yeah. That's holy cow, man. Yep. It's pretty great. It, it took me a while, though, because I kept putting my thumb in the middle of the controller right there. You know, like, and then going to the side, doing the little button. It's like, uh, it's like how how did I use this? Fucking, and it, right, yeah, because you're used to the Xbox controller. Well, not just that, but, like, there's a special placement on this controller. If you put your thumb on the Y button, the Y button is the key. The Y button is your anchor on this controller. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The Y, yeah. you, you put your thumb right there, right, 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 oh, shit, right, right there. <laughs> and then that allows you to get to all the other buttons as you yeah. need. Yeah, it's it's, I, it's indented. It, like it's like a, it's so like is the home the, key. So is the X button though. Like they're both indented. Yeah. Well. But the Y button is the, that's the key. Like the Y button is the key button. You should have one of those little <laughs> little blind people buttons on there. So do you remember how our friend Patrick used to hold the NES and SNES controller? <laughs> and and thus why he stopped playing video games when the sixty four came out. Right. Yes. But he would. Yes. So Amos is demonstrating right now holding the controller like basically upside down and using your fingertips instead of your thumbs. Right. To manipulate the controls. Yeah. It was the most bizarre shit to watch. This is what kills me, though. This right here. What the fuck is this? Why? Why, Nintendo? This is not your standard controller port. This is like some. Right hoogie bougie shit that they just randomly came up with because they ran out of Legos one day and they want to <laughs> fucking like this is this is stupid. Just make it USB. Everybody's gonna hack it for USB anyway. Just make it USB to begin with. Save everybody yeah, the trouble it, and save yourself the money of this proprietary shit. Right. Yeah. And see, I I thought it was USB because I'd only seen I'd only seen it in photos and it yeah. looks it looked USB enough to be USB. And it yeah. was apparently it's not USB. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh man! Well, BioCal's running through all the uh, all the commands <laughs> in Nightbot. <laughs> nice. So, if you guys are listening to this in your podcatcher, I want you guys to do us a favor and go over to Twitch TV slash Ritual Misery Podcast. Ritual Is Misery that the Podcast. URL? Yep. yep. Uh, and and please subscribe or well, not subscribe. Follow. What is it? Follow. Follow. You can't subscribe yet until we get enough followers and we become affiliated. Yeah, exactly. So I, I want you guys to go over there and follow us. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have to create a Twitch account just to do that, uh, yeah, uh, we need you to do that. Like, you got to go ahead and do that. Um, <laughs> no, but that would be awesome because there's this other show called The VOD Squad. The what? The, thing, the VOD Squad. The like, what? They think they're so cool. The VOD they, Squad? Like, like, tell me that's like, that's like uh, some, some check name, right? Where it's actually like KR <laughs> makes the V sound, right? <laughs> I got, see, I don't, I can't attest to that. No, no I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's like K R U L, <laughs> and then there's like a there's like a, a a one in there followed by a square and a backwards well, I heart. Think what's right? happening actually is that I'm mispronouncing it because it's actually spelled like Vod Squad, like V O D. Oh, oh, squad. 
Oh, and, but it's probably you're probably right. It's probably like you know the the crap squad or something. The the, the crap squad because because they think they're all cool, man. I mean, okay, so their show is actually it's actually hey don't don't tell our audience, but the show is actually like pretty cool. Uh, but you're not, anyway, you're, you're, so, not you're not supposed to say that in the mic, dude. You're not supposed to. Not oh, supposed was to... it not the? Okay, well anyway, so <laughs> those guys suck, and they want to have more more followers than ritual misery does right and uh um, yeah, no. can't let that happen so no what we need you guys to do is follow us on twitch mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. tell all your friends to go follow us on twitch it doesn't matter if they ever watch us yeah and, and it well, doesn't cost yeah. you anything it, it costs you literally like 30 seconds of your time and and well if we're not worth that then why the fuck are we on the internet <laughs> right yeah but no that w- that would be awesome uh we we are in a little bit of a feud with the vod squad uh, Poodle Puncher threw down the gauntlet a few weeks ago, and uh, we need to show him up because uh, Ritual Misery is definitely cooler than the VOD Squad. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, there's, there's there's so much more going on this week though. Is yeah. it wait, wait, the Bod Squad? <laughs> there's so many better names they could have. The uh, the Vampire Podcast, the VOD Squad, <laughs> right? <laughs> Just the Odd Squad. The Odd Squad. There you go. There you go. That's that, they they screwed uh, up, they, man. They need to get a guy named Todd on the show so the, they can be the Todd the squad. Todd squad. They could all be Todds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just like uh, Hello Internet fans are all Tims. They could they could, all their fans are could be Todds. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> hey, um, you were talking about audio stuff earlier, and I had my own audio problems this week. Yeah, I had this this feeding into my anytime I played system sounds on my computer. If I played them too loud, I had this just amazing squeal crap shit sound yeah so i isolated it down i i in fact got a uh, usb audio adapter similar to yours but not the same one obviously because i had to stop by the local best buy and pick mine up for a little not radio shack no no (laughs) i can't even find radio shack up here (laughs) um and uh yeah yeah you can follow follow the vod squad make sure you know just how bad that show is then come over and and uh and and see how it's done on the ritual misery podcast yeah, just be um, sure you follow them though, so that you can uh, easily find them and, and harass them. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Just just for that purpose only. That's that's fine. Um, <laughs> they, uh, I, w- I went and got it. I wrapped up all my audio cables, like wrapped them up real nice and pretty. I got everything, you know, all the the power lines and the data lines and the and the audio lines all separated. Nothing fancy, just a bunch of zip ties and some uh, some creative placement. That sound is gone. Oh, gone, gone, gone. Nice. But now, I, whenever I do my mix minus from here, the not you guest, the other person that's usually in the other Skype instance, all they hear is crap. So I got rid of my, my minor annoyance and now have a major annoyance. <laughs> oh, what the hell, man? Yeah, I think the I've gremlins got... gremlins strike again! Yeah, well, it's, it's, maybe it's a good thing we didn't have a, uh, didn't have a guest this week. So <laughs> <laughs> We'd still be in pre-show. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Um, <laughs> man, oh, I did something actually pretty cool this yeah? week. Um, it was super simple in my face. I should have known the the entire time, but I figured something out, and it it saved me a shitload of uh, future time and effort. So you know how Sassian and I are doing a Doctor Who podcast, right? Called the Doc um, Squad. It, say that again. It's called the Doc Squad. The Doc Squad. Yeah. The, well, the Box Squad. Yeah, well, it's so its real name is going to be the uh, is going to be Blue Box Travelers. Uh, you can go ahead and uh, follow that if you want on Twitter. Uh, BB Travelers is the Twitter handle. Uh, it is not published yet, but it is coming very soon. And uh, what we've done so far, because when we started this, BritBox was not a thing. Mm-hmm. We are using DVDs, and we've been purchasing them through Amazon. And one way that we can get them cheaper is if we buy the region two dvds from bbc and we thought we were gonna have to you you know how like on on dvd players you can you can change the the region coding but only like four times or some crap and then then the dvd player is just a piece of shit after that (laughs) it's just locked at whatever last point (laughs) yeah yeah. so i was like man i want (laughs) to avoid doing that Easiest fix on the planet, if you download VLC player mm-hmm. and just open up VLC player and then tell it to open the DVD rather than going through like whatever your like default 
DVD player is or you know whatever software you use to watch a, uh, a a disc, just open VLC and have it open the disc. And VLC is like, fuck region coding. What is that even? <laughs> it doesn't exist. So a cool a cool region encoding hack for everybody. Uh, everybody in, yeah, everybody's probably like, uh, duh, um, of course. <laughs> I uh, I don't I don't watch DVDs anymore. I just rip them to my plex. Yeah, Fitz actually <laughs> said DVD players still exist. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean if you go to Radio Shack, you might be able to pick one up. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, also, uh, drone enthusiast podcast, the Quad Squad. <laughs> uh, That's so amazing. Awesome, man! I'm gonna have to look all these up. Yeah, <laughs> they sound like great shows. <laughs> Poodle Punch is not going to get any follows, but all the other shows are all going to be affiliated. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, it comes to find out, P- Poodle Puncher runs all of them. <laughs> it's like no wonder, you, never wonder he never has time to come on this show, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, no doubt. They probably all auto host the VOD Squad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so if, if if you're watching the video podcast, you can see two big ass cases or two big ass uh, boxes behind me from Amazon. The bottom one is a case for a computer, and the top one is where I had a bunch of parts for computer stuff come in. My my son decides that he wants to build a computer, and he's got an $800 budget. So we're looking through, we're looking through, looking through. He wants to buy a gaming computer, can't afford a, a real gaming computer, but he can afford you know, something he can upgrade or whatever, whatever. Yeah, it sounds like uh, Christmas in my house last year. Right, right. Well... I started looking, and for the eight hundred dollars he was going to spend, plus a little bit of a little bit more cash, I could rebuild the beast, which is my computer, and he and we could like like I could take some of my stuff and some of, and buy some new stuff, and then he could take my old stuff and use some some new stuff, and we can make two computers with with, with the equipment we have, and both of us end up on top. Okay. Because there's, there's there's certain things that we wouldn't have to buy again, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because I had an, I had a motherboard, but I didn't have a processor for it. Well, that's what that is. It's all the parts. So you know what we're doing on this four day weekend? Sounds like you're building a couple computers. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, although that sounds like a great time. I uh, so everything came in perfectly. Everything, all the, all the stuff in the box, everything's great, right? Except for my processor. Okay. Uh, they they sent you a processor though, right? They they did. Okay. Was it um, uh, like a three eighty six? No, no. It's a uh, it's a it's actually a Core i seven six thousand eight hundred. Okay. So six core. Um, it's a that's a modern processor. I mean, it, yeah, yeah. For the most part, I mean, it's not like new, right? It's, I mean, it's not it's not like cutting edge, but it's modern. Right. It's actually the same generation of processor that's in the, in my computer now, which is a six thousand seven hundred. Um, okay, and um, so it comes in the box, mm-hmm. and unfortunately, the this box was on bottom of all the other boxes. Oh no, so no! I haven't opened it yet. Oh my god! But this are we gonna box, have a live unboxing on Ritual Misery? This box got crushed. <laughs> so, uh, luckily, now is this one of the boxes that you can see the processor? Uh, like, is it behind plastic? Yeah, or do you have to actually right, open it's it right to back see there. It? Yeah. Oh, okay. So can, it, can it, you see any damage through the plastic? No, it, it looks okay. Although you can you can definitely tell the plastic has been has yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's worse for wear. So that'll so be it's interesting. Probably crap now. Yeah, I, I don't know. We'll find out. Um it, it, I don't know. I don't overclock, so I'm not really worried about, you know, the minor stuff, but sure, man, sure. hopefully it's all in one piece. Because that shit was expensive. Man. Um, yeah. so, so I'm going to, I'm, I'm trying to find a name for the new computer. Cause this one's beast. My old computer was monster and it's over there. Um, I need to find a new name. I'm thinking son of beast, but I, I don't know if there's like some really weird, uh, you know, comic book connotation for son of beast, you know, I didn't want to go it's Wolverine. Son of beach. Son of beach? <laughs> <laughs> Spelled with two eyes. <laughs> 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 Oh, oh shit. Man. Um and I got good news. Oh, oh god, better news than than the fact that you're building a couple computers this weekend? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay. Travel with me 
to Twitter. I'm on Twitter. I'm scrolling through. And I see a post by Seth MacFarlane that says, hey, my new album is now available on iTunes. Okay. Okay. Well, I like He's Seth. Mac- huh? He's a crooner. He is. He is. And, and pretty good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I click on it, and I follow it, and I start listening to it work. And I'm like, this is pretty good. And I go down to, you know, look at the more information, stuff like that, blah, 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 blah. See if he's got other albums. Because I know he has some, but I didn't know how many, right? You know, he's got like mm-hmm. six albums out now. I find one by Rachel McFarlane. Oh. He's got a younger sister that, that sings as well. So I click on that and I listen to that for a little bit. Okay, cool. More artists like this. I'm like, holy shit, man. I might have just hit a, hit a gold mine for music to work, listen to at work, you know? On that list is a band called Postmodern Jukebox. Okay. Have you heard of Postmodern Jukebox? I believe I have. Um, uh, BioCal wants to know if she's hot. Um, I mean, for a for a thirty five year old lady, she's she's held up well. Oh Jesus! Like that's old. That's not old. Well, what no. does that even mean? Some thirty five year olds are like, oh my god, she really enjoyed her twenties. Uh, <laughs> so does some twenty-five year olds. It's like, what does that even mean? Um, oh, or you could be ninety-five, like yeah. Betty White, and still be hot. Oh my God! Somebody better protect that chick. Uh, we got too many, too many stars dying. Tom Petty, rip. Um, right? So, so postmodern jukebox basically plays newer, new-ish, like current. Uh, maybe not current, but I mean, sometimes they're current. They're, they play new music. In 20s to 50s styles. So they'll take a hip hop album or a rap album, you know, they'll, they'll take Gangster's Paradise and put it to a 20s uh, swing tune. And it's amazing. It's completely amazing. So I go to follow them on Twitter. Why? Because that's where I originally started this whole journey. I wanted to go back. And the Twitter post shows that they're on tour. <laughs> well, let's find out about this. Oh my God! Come okay. to find out, the tickets just went on sale uh, earlier this week, and one of the first places they're hitting is Anchorage, Alaska. What the fuck, dude? So October twentieth, me, my wife, and the twins are going to Postmodern Jukebox on a full scale nineteen twenties date. What? That sounds like fate. That's amazing, dude. I'm, yeah. I'm again, once again, I'm a little bit jealous it, of what you got going on. They've only been on sale for a couple. Well, they had only been on sale for a couple of days, and they were almost sold out. Like we got in the balcony because we got four seats together. The closest yeah. we could have gotten for two seats together was halfway off the floor, like halfway halfway back from the stage. Yeah. So that's well, you know, I'm I'm, I'm not complaining. I mean, it's, yeah, it's going to be good. awesome. So. Yeah, like I said, man. That's I, anytime I can take take the take the wife and ladies out. That's that's a good day. So that yeah. ra- that rounds up my weekly uh, weekly rundown. Yeah. <laughs> um, if if somebody would want to help you pay for those tickets, um, is there a way that that they might be able to do that? I mean, they could they could mail me cash. Yeah. Uh, what if somebody wanted to help? Uh, ritual misery have a, a better show by maybe helping us upgrade our equipment, like um, <clears throat> rebuild the beast. Oh, um, um, I mean, they could it, they could go to Amazon, buy some shit from our website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a yeah, there's a link on on ritualmisery.com to a wish list. I think right. Hey, what, we, have we updated that? What what is this in the chat room? Hold on, uh, uh, M Beam in the chat room. Uh, no, no, no. The bio cow in the chat room just uh, just typed in some Patreon thing, and it comes up with the link says www.patreon.com slash ritual misery. What is that? Yeah. So if you click on the link, oh, so, uh, so patreon.com so you know slash ritual misery, it goes to a page that's got our ugly mugs on it. And a really old video. And, yes, and a really <laughs> awful, old, outdated video that everybody should definitely not go watch. And, uh, but, uh, I, I tell you what, I'll make a deal with you. You guys can go over there and watch that as many times as you want. If you click on the, the, the little button over there to become our patron and give us a buck. Mm. Uh, if, if you, if you like our show and you give a fuck, 
go ahead and, and uh, go to patreon.com slash ritual misery and give us a buck. Um, that'd be great. Um, um, what else is going on, dude? Like, um, drink you got, um, uh, oh, I see you got some, some beer still. Is it, uh, is it getting better as it warms up a little bit or is it getting, is it getting worse? It's getting worse. Uh, <laughs> Do not commit the ultimate beer sin and drain pour that thing. You got to finish it. No, that's not You're happening. Committed. <laughs> <clears throat> that's not happening. What's going on with the flavor profile? Um, it, it, well, the bitter is coming through more, but also more of the sweet is actually coming through now. And okay. that could just be my palate desensitizing to the bitter, but I'm willing to take mm. it. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> So, dude, I, I, I got some bad news. Um, other than Tom Petty. Uh, okay. For, yeah. So let's let's get in this Tom Petty thing, okay? Uh, okay. Hopefully, not too much. Uh, I'm. I, I don't want to go over the news aspect. I don't want to go over like uh, a big in memoriam of Tom Petty or anything. Right. Right. What I want to do is express this weird feeling. This 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 strange feeling, like. I never saw Tom Petty in concert. I never intended to see Tom Petty in concert. I would have loved to have seen Tom Petty in concert, but it wasn't right. something I was going to go fly to a different state for. It wasn't on your else. bucket list. Right, right, right. Yeah. And now that now that he's passed away, with with a great last joke to, uh, on the media, by the way. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, I, it's, it's this awkward, like, it saddens me that he's not going to make any more music. But that sadness comes with the realization that I actually haven't listened to any of his music in 20 years. Wait, what? Yeah. I call bullshit. Well, I mean, I've listened to a song or two here or there. I mean, me and Maddie listened to A Girl Who Drinks Coffee like a couple months ago, but I haven't like gone out and, and searched out any of his new music since high school. Ah, I fall. Okay, I'm with you now. You yeah, know? yeah. Whereas like Metallica, their new album sucks, but I still went out and, and listened to it as soon as I could. Sure, sure. So, I don't know. I, I, is that about how you felt too? Uh, you know, <sighs> I felt the same way with Prince actually, and David Bowie. And, now, and yeah, people. now Prince, yeah, Prince. That's where I was with Prince. Uh, Petty, to a lesser extreme, I guess. Uh, I can't say that I didn't purposely seek him out in the last twenty years because I, I have, um, but I'm not. Yeah, I haven't rushed out to to listen to his newest stuff um that's like i'll I'll catch what gets radio play right um so yeah i mean i mean same same uh, otherwise uh, if he if he came to my town which no one is ever going to come to my town but if he came to my town you bet your ass <laughs> i would have been at the show uh, but i wasn't gonna you know i wouldn't i wouldn't travel to Aber albuquerque to see him you know that's, right. which is like three and a half hours away yeah, it's kind of the litmus test, right? If you would drive like more than an hour to another city to see an artist, then that's called fandom, right? It's, it's <laughs> just it's just weird. But then, are you not a fan because you wouldn't drive an hour or so to see Tom Petty? Like you're still a fan. You're just sure. You're like an inactive fan, you know? Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just like levels of dedication, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Eh, like, I don't know. I, I mean, weird. there's there's people that would go to Twitch to watch our show, but not go to Patreon to you know give us a buck so it's levels of dedication and, and, and i don't hold anything against them some some people can't some people have and then they couldn't so they didn't and then they've come back and you know it's all appreciated right, yeah, yeah. but it's 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 like that like we fly to we fly to texas because we're a fan of of the community if not just the show night attack right yeah yeah accurate but i i don't see uh night attack flying here to watch me <laughs> <laughs> now that's when you know you made it. <laughs> uh, when they're like, you know what, fuck it, Diamond Con, it's in fucking Alamogordo this year. We're <laughs> <Yeah>. just... <laughs> it's a Kent's house. Yay. He said he's going to flip some burgers for it. <laughs> Get real drunk and pass out right before the show. It's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <sighs> um, amazing. Um, no, but dude, like I was saying, I, I got I got some bad news, man. Um, it it was it was it was bad to find out that Tom Petty had passed. He was sixty six years old. Uh, but I found out that somebody that's that's much older 
has has um, been confirmed dead. It's um, somebody that I, I'm pretty sure that most, if not all, of our entire audience has, at least at some point in their life, would have said that they love this person. Hmm. Um, uh, it was it's uh it's, it's Santa Claus. I uh, I thought he died like it, a long time ago. Well, they found his body. <laughs> uh, he's 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 dead and he's in Turkey, uh, buried in a uh, in a in a tomb <laughs> under a church, uh, under a cathedral that. Uh, oh, I did read about this. Yeah, yeah, I, I read. It. Oh my gosh, yes, this is the like. Okay, first of all, what the hell are you doing digging under drain, just random churches? Like nobody else <laughs> finds that weird. <laughs> Oh man, I just uh, what the fuck? Like, okay, so I have a problem with with certain movies and certain like pop culture things that. All right, all right. Let let me back up a little bit. Parents can choose to to propagate the Santa myth or not. Hmm. Uh, but if it to me, like in in our American culture. It feels to me that at least like, you know, you're with young children, like I would say like seven and under. It should be up to the parents if they if they propagate that myth or not, you know, mm-hmm. because it's for the most part, it's a harmless thing. It's just a fun little fantasy thing. Right. It's it's um, li- it's lying to your kids. But it was sure. Sure. But it's also you know the same <laughs> with you know not describing sex in detail to your four year old or five year old. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, that's leave that to the parents to decide how and when to to yeah. explain certain things to yeah. their children. Depending, right? on, depending on what state you're in, it's illegal to describe sex to a four year old that's not yours. And it probably <laughs> should be. <laughs> and it should also be against the law to destroy the Santa myth for your five year old. Uh, for someone else's yeah, so, five-year-old. You can destroy your own five-year-old Santa myth all you want. So I have a problem with pop culture things that that just like just throw it out there. Like the movie Gremlins. One of my favorite fucking movies. I love that movie. Mm-hmm. Except for that fucking scene in the bank when Kate has to tell Billy about how her father died, which it has no place in that movie anyway. That scene is just a a downer for the sake of fucking up a movie. And then the moral of the story was, and that's how I found out the Santa Claus isn't real. <laughs> what the fuck is that doing in this movie? That has no place. <laughs> so that's actually what I thought of when I saw the headline to this article. It said, Santa is dead. According to archaeologists, I think was the uh, the headline. Santa dead, archaeologists say. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that was the headline that I clicked on to find this article about uh, you know finding the the body of Saint Nicholas, et cetera, et cetera. I was like, man, this is the shit that it's completely unnecessary. It was probably posted by a dickhead that doesn't have children. Uh, interesting article, but come on, man, like. Uh, why you got to do that shit? <laughs> um, it, uh, I've I, I've always had a love love hate relationship with Santa Claus. Like, even uh, even when I was young, I was always like, "This is not a real thing." It, it didn't pass the logic. It, like, it didn't. It didn't. It. Uh, I, I just. I never jived with Santa Claus. All right, I was never a a dedicated believer. You, because you didn't get good presents. I mean, that could be it, but. <laughs> Yeah, that's well. Actually, that was my that was my clue in when I was probably like seven or something like that, because I was getting toys that weren't um, necessarily complete or uh, <laughs> <laughs> like the best version or like the exact one that I wanted or something like that. I was like, okay, there's, there's something's going on here. <laughs> Someone is fallible here. <laughs> um, I I don't I don't remember when I when I exactly when I put it together by. By second grade, I knew where all the presents were hidden. Ah, uh, yeah. So see, that's a. I, I think by second grade, I was suspicious. Hmm. Uh, by third or fourth grade, I was 
pretty sure. But I started instead of looking for evidence against, I started looking for evidence for. Oh, uh, confirmation and bias. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a little bit of um, uh, cognitive dissonance was going on. Yeah, and I, yeah, that that lasted about a year, and then finally I was like. Okay, I I hear mom and dad talking as they're putting the presents out. Um, <laughs> God damn it! Because even they, it. even they don't care at that point. They're like, "Fuck this yeah. kid." <laughs> the, mag- the magic is gone. God damn it! It's um, not even midnight yet. <laughs> I I remember I remember uh, Christmas of second grade. Well, Christmas of first grade is when I had the chicken box. Well, no, Christmas of second grade is when I had chicken box. The oh, entire the entire bummer. Christmas vacation. So, I remember that year was the year that I was like, "Well, I'm going to prove it this year." Oh shit! So if I if I was thinking that I know at least two Christmases before that I, I I was suspicious. So we're going going back to like four years old or whatever. Like some of my earliest memories are Santa Claus is a fucking joke. Yeah, like that's 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 how that's how sarcastic or not sarcastic, a pessimistic I am. I I I disproved Santa Claus at fucking four years old. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Come at me, bro. Um, Happy Santa. <laughs> Come at me, Rudolph. <laughs> okay. Um, so since we're talking about uh, about kids, I want to tell you a little story about Sterling. Okay, that's uh, that's one of the twins. That's the younger of the twins. She's 15 years old. Okay. They are going to go get their flu shots tomorrow. Okay. Okay, yeah. Sounds good, right? I mean, no big deal, right? Sterling sure, sure. has anxiety about having her flu shot. Mm. So I'm I'm cajoling her a little bit as as fathers are wont to do. <laughs> and I'm like, so what is it what is it about it that you don't like? Like why why are you bothered by it? you know, I, I pinch her on the arm, I'm like, it's not gonna even hurt that bad. And you just put up with that. She goes, It's not the pain. I don't like having little tiny things inside me that once they're all the way in, they squirt stuff inside me, then come out. No, no. And I, and I said, Sterling, you just described sex. Her face went bright red. She fell to the floor laughing and crying at the same time. It was just one of those little fatherly moments that made my made me proud of myself. Oh my god, man. <laughs> I don't know how I would respond to that. Thank God I don't have daughters. <laughs> Son of a bitch. So, I don't think Sterling's going to be getting laid anytime soon cuz <laughs> oh, No. That's oh man. <sighs> That happened right before the show, and I actually wrote down a note just to remember exactly what she said. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's a, that's as good as a quote for a quote that I can. That, uh, yeah, it was just it was amazing. It was I just I love my kids, man. They're fucking awesome. That is God. That's that's so perfect that how how could she how could that be an accident? How could you not have planned that? <laughs> that son of a bitch. Uh, uh, so so the, I. I Needless to say, when they go to get shots tomorrow, I'm going to remind them that uh, at, least, at least it's not as bad as sex. Hey, does, does Madison know yet about the story? Uh, no, she was down here uh, hanging out with Autumn. Uh, okay, okay. Well, unless Sterling has told her in the meantime. Yeah, they did go to the gym uh, while I'm sitting here drinking beer. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, that might be part of your problem. Uh, uh, yeah, <clears throat> BioCow, she's 15. She's, she knows all about the birds and the bees. We've, they've known for years. <laughs> yeah, not not a four, not a four year old. Uh, keep like keep in mind, I am I'm the father that throws uh, period parties, so I I don't go with the the uh, uh, that's his pee pee and that's her her nay nay. No, it's it, that's a penis, that's a vagina. That's it's just call it what it is. Don't be ashamed of it. Move on with life. Right. Yep. That's your pedus. <laughs> <In this. laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that, oh, that little God. thing that you hate right now because of that special time of month, that's the same thing that every boy is going to want to be want want to have from now until you're 80. Yeah, uh, it's gotten I, I having daughters is fucking rough, dude. Yeah, fuck all that. 
<laughs> um, congratulations! Yeah, what is, what is it? Daughters what is, for the both of us. <laughs> what is it? You you have you have sons, so you just have to worry about two penises. I have daughters, I have to worry about every penis. <laughs> yes. Yep. 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 Better you than me. Uh, I got some good news though, man. So, yeah, like Santa might be dead, and and uh, Tom Petty might be dead, but we have confirmation that time travel is real. Oh, really? Yeah. So this happened in uh, where, where? Oh gosh, where where was this? This was in Oklahoma, I think. No, Wyoming. This was in Wyoming. A man was arrested last week uh, for, for intoxication. But but he had a, he had a good reason. It turns out that he's a time traveler mm. from the year 2048. And in order to to time travel, what, what enabled him to time travel were these aliens had to in, inject him with with a lot of alcohol. And, and that is the like that's like kind of like the secret ingredient. Like that is what enables time travel. Alcohol it is. Yes. So an ABV, you've got to have like a one percent or a, a point one something percent uh, BAC in order to time travel. So that, which is also good news for me. Um, <laughs> well, let's see, we get started. Yeah. Right. So this guy, he comes back from 2048 to 2017 to warn us of an alien invasion that's coming. Mm. And uh, it actually, it actually turns out there was a slight miscalculation. He was supposed to only go back 30 years, so he was supposed to, he was supposed to come out of, out of the, you know, time vortex or whatever in 2018. Uh, like right before the invasion, so we could like you know, r- you know, d- do something right before it happened, I guess. Um, but uh, but yeah, he came all the way back to 2017. So instead of being able to warn the right people, he he got arrested for public intoxication. Well, you, you know the problem. The problem is he he was too drunk. He came in at a point one three six instead of a point one. <laughs> right. <laughs> so there's there's your problem. Uh, we solved this mystery. It's right there. Um, wow. But here's yeah. here's the thing, though. Okay, first of all, if he is from 2048 and the invasion is supposed to happen in 2018, what the hell has he been doing for 30 years? Like, well, did it he, take... Did he's it been take, a captive, I think. Yeah, did it take 30... Like, he's not even 30 years old, is he? But anyway, okay, whatever. Um, also, <laughs> also, how fucked up is it if we actually have an alien invasion next year? And this guy's sitting in a jail cell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, we need we need to bail him out. We need to get him on the show so we can ask him all these questions. Um, his name his name is Bryant Johnson, and he's from Casper. Uh, what did I say? Casper, Wyoming. If anybody's in Wyoming or anywhere near there, like please get us in contact with this guy. I want him on the show. Yeah. Also, what kind of name is Casper, Wyoming? Uh, it's it's I don't know. It's kind of a it's sort of a scary name, but uh, mostly cute. I let's see. You think about things totally differently than I do. Like we drove through Casper, Wyoming, on our way up here from Texas, and the entire oh, time, no the entire time, my wife ducked down. You're like, you know, she was like, I'm not trying to be seen in here. Um, that's just uh, <laughs> damn, <laughs> damn. It's because she's afraid of ghosts, right? It, right? She totally is, and she's afraid of the dark. Uh, <laughs> Oh my God! The joke is that his wife is black, but uh, <laughs> I wasn't gonna go there. I wasn't gonna go there. Like I didn't, I, I didn't think that was something we needed to do. But you know, something we do need to do. This is one I actually picked out, and I think we've already talked about it before. But if we have, then that's part of the trick. Um, Apollo ah. Robbins, The Art of Misdirection. Yeah, I don't think we did cover this one before. I think I might have seen it before, but I'm pretty sure we haven't covered it. Man, this is so good. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, this is an interesting one to come on the heels of last week's Brian Brushwood, Ted. Mm-hmm. Uh, because this guy and, and Brian have a lot in common. Uh, they're both... Um, they're both magicians. Well, this guy—I don't know if this guy would consider himself a magician, but he's very much in that same realm: uh, sleight of hand, uh, misdirection, 
um, psychology, uh, you know, psychology of the mind, trickery kind mm-hmm. of stuff. Um, I mean, that's a magician in my book. But uh, anyway, th- this guy, he describes himself as a, as a pickpocket. Uh, but he right. basically he puts on a, a ten minute demonstration. He's what, the, the world's the world's most polite pickpocket or something like that. Yeah, like and he is like he's incredibly engaging, which is actually part of his part of his shtick. He distracts you not through like look over here, look over here. He distracts you by like completely other like way more subliminal things. Like I'm I'm talking about a thing. While you should be thinking about a different thing, mm-hmm. and then you thought about the wrong thing while he was talking about a different thing, you know, and it's like, holy fuck, complete mind fuck, which I thought I was following along for about seven minutes. I really thought I was following along. And then he asks, do you remember at the beginning what I was wearing? Thank you very much. And yeah. I goes. Because he so, mind fucked us. So how by many? Changing how his, many times did you watch this? I watched it twice. Only twice? Yes. Well, there was one part that I actually I, I rewound it thirty seconds to watch <laughs> part again, and then I rewound it another thirty seconds just to make sure I was catching the right thing. Uh, exactly. I I think it's amazing <laughs> that the first time you watch it, you, you don't see hardly any of this stuff. Like maybe you catch one or two. Yeah, yeah. But, but the second time through, you think you catch it, and then finally, like the third or fourth time I watched it, I was like, okay, nailed that one, got that one, that one. This one you can't see because the camera. But the little thing where he drops it off his head, like I had to figure that out, like because it barely see it. Yeah, this was great, man. Yeah, yeah, it, it's pretty great. I mean, guys, go check this one out. Apollo Robbins is his name. I'm sure he's got a bunch of YouTubes out there too. If you don't want to go to Ted, um, yeah, the guy is <clears throat> he's super cool to watch. He's he's fun and he is really talented. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he's yeah, got a lot of other stuff on the old internet as well. So if you like this, you can just do do a search and, and find so much more. Um, yeah. Hey man, there's a there's a way for people to find new stuff, and we do it every year. Well, we've done it. We did it last year and the year before. That was just me. But <laughs> we. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's got to start somewhere. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, um, that's, that's how traditions begin. We are heading for the third annual. I love being able to say the third annual because this first annual is bullshit. The second annual is like, yeah, so fucking what? You just did it two years. We're heading to the third right. annual New Year's Eve streamathon. And you are typing, so I'll carry it from here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, fuck. He's throwing to me. Uh, yeah, dude. Like, no, last year's New Year's Eve streamathon was incredible like dude we had a probably a good like 45 day run up to it where you and i were were super busy with with getting everything organized getting the the guests gathered together get putting up a schedule getting um swag made up and all this kind of stuff and oh my god it was non-stop until finally on december 31st of 2016 we did one of the most fun uh, most well paid off efforts that mm. I've ever been a part of. It was absolutely incredible. Uh, we streamed for 27 hours straight, not me and you for 27 straight hours. Oh, good God. Uh, no. But diamond on diamondclub.tv in, in um, uh, uh, conjunction, I guess, with the uh, DCD, DCTV streamathon theme, we had a nonstop stream for 27 hours. And we had talent like Christy Cates. Uh, Bonnie we Brushwood. had Bonnie Brushwood. Uh, Brian made an appearance at some point. Brian Ibbett. Uh, yeah, Brian Ibbett, uh, Coverville. Yeah. Um, brought, there we, was a. We had, go ahead. We had Fitz on for a little bit, even though yep. I, that didn't work out as well as we'd hoped, but he was still on there and it made it entertaining, if nothing else. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, he was having tech issues. Yep, we had uh th- that was the premiere of the Diamond Club movie party, I believe. Was it not? Yeah. I think it was. I think it, I think it was. And and also the it was the uh live video streaming premiere of Have a Drink show. It was. Uh as well as the premiere of Christy Kate's uh performing music, not just reporting on it. Yep. Like yep. so many great things happened. Like I think that was the first time we ever have ever had a workout video on like a morning workout on diamondclub.tv. Yeah, oh, no doubt, no doubt. Oh yeah, uh, and and I was elected the first uh 
unofficial or, or unsanctioned, unsanctioned official unsanctioned. Diamond Club president, which yes. a title I still hold to this day because nobody's challenged me. <laughs> so good, man. The the DC TV streamathon is so much fun, and of course, of course, we're doing it again this year. Mm-hmm. We are starting a little bit early this year so that we don't have quite the the holy shit, oh my god, which, rush. Which actually, we started early, but we are currently right now at the same point where we were last year when we initially kicked it off. Are we really? Yes. Because it seems like it was, well, okay. <clears throat> so one thing that we're doing different this year uh, that's going to hopefully alleviate some of that, uh, we are asking for volunteers to put on a stream. Mm-hmm. We're offering one-hour blocks. Uh, you don't. You're not limited to one hour. You can you can ask for two or three hours. You can do Either a half hour if that's all you got. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. If 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 half hour is all you got, we can work something out. We can find another half hour streamer, or mm-hmm. maybe me or Amos and or Amos uh, will jump on for that. Fill that half hour gap. Uh, whatever you can do. Uh, so we are asking for streamers, of course, but we're also asking for people to help out in the uh behind the scenes capacities Mm -hmm. um so we were looking for uh, tech people uh you know just general tech support stuff that can help with the streamers uh you know twitch because we're going to do this over twitch i believe i'm like 90 percent sure that this is going to be a twitch effort um well we'll see we we might incorporate youtube as well. well we'll see how this plays um but people that are knowledgeable of those platforms knowledgeable of stream keys and, you know, things like that, things that can, you know, for ways to help inexperienced streamers. Also, we're looking for people that might want to make some graphics for this, uh, possibly some video bumpers, uh, do promotion. So, like, uh, I did a Diamond Time submission this week. Uh, people that, that can help with those sorts of things. And one other big thing we're looking for. And what would that be? Last year, we raised two thousand seventy-three dollars for various children's hospitals around the country through Extra Life. Yep. This year, we're not going to use Extra Life. We we would prefer not to because they cut us off at midnight Pacific time, and we still had several hours left to go. Um, we want to find something that's this charitable, something that people can get behind, and that's easy to advertise and get out there, and is genuinely helpful. So. Yes. Uh, and last year we kind of branched off and had a bunch of people do their own little hospitals and things like that. This year we want to do a single point. So we just have one place that's getting the money. If you have a charity in mind or a nonprofit, um, in mind that, that has a good turnaround rate and is actually beneficial, especially if it involves kids, families, or veterans, let us know. We, we really want to tackle that down pretty quick because I want to get, get in contact with them and make things happen. But um, I don't want to lim- limit it to myself. I want everybody to be able to put in ideas. So we're we're looking for a beneficiary to our charity stream for this year. Yeah, so I've got uh, uh, two different links that people can follow. There's uh, yellow420.com slash streamathon leads you right to the sign-up page. Uh, also, you can go to ritualmisery.com slash 2017 streamathon. All one word. 2017 streamathon uh ritualmisery.com slash 2017 streamathon will lead lead you to a page on our site that's got a little bit more information uh d- definitely has a link to the sign up on there uh we need as many people to sign up as possible even if you're not sure but you want to be involved you want to get in on the slack uh the email uh traffic that that gets sent out you want to you know find where you might be able to help uh, go ahead and sign in. There is a place in the form where you can add comments. Mm-hmm. Uh, go ahead and just just state that in there. Uh, please do that for us, and uh, that we can it, as great as last year's streamathon was. I know we can make this even better, like by far. And it's gonna. It's it. Amos and I can't do it by ourselves. We need you guys. You yeah. guys are the ones that are gonna make this thing and awesome. Honestly, we don't want to do it by ourselves. I did this oh, God, because. No. We want to make sure no one has to spend New Year's Eve alone. That's that's the big key. We yeah. want to raise some money for a really good cause while we're at it. We started out raising a couple hundred dollars for um for oh uh, shit. Tez and Ev. Tez and Ev. God, see, I always forget that shit. Down in Australia, we raised a couple hundred dollars to help them out uh, with their GoFundMe. 
with yeah, with Blurch and yeah. all that. Uh, last year we raised a couple thousand dollars. This year we're hoping let, let's let's hit five. Let's hit five thousand dollars just of the Diamond Club community. How amazing would that be? Yep. Yeah, yeah. But we definitely need that that volunteer to help with the the charity. Uh, not just for suggest. We definitely want suggestions, but we also want somebody to to kind of be the like coordinator for that too. Right. Uh, maybe be the liaison or maybe just be the, uh, you know, the person that explains to people how to, how to funnel the, the donations to the charity, things like that. Yep. Uh, uh, so whatever you guys can do, uh, would be freaking awesome. And, and we want to make sure that this is something that outlasts us. We don't want this to be the ritual misery, uh, uh, annual thing. We want this to be the diamond club thing that if, if me and Kent can't do it one year, that someone else would take the torch and, and make sure oh, this happens definitely. every year. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, so yeah, man, uh, looking so forward to that. Uh, you know what else I'm looking forward to? Um, the end of the show. <laughs> well, I do have to pee, so there is that. Uh, but something that actually I'm looking forward to even more than my post show pee. I'm looking forward to next week, man. You're, this you're, episode you're, is not even over yet, and I'm looking forward to next week's episode. You're, you're saying snubs is better than a pee. <laughs> I mean, well, I have to agree with you. That's that's clearly the case. So, uh, are are you guys familiar with Hack Five? I I bet most, if not all, of our audience is familiar with Hack Five. Yeah, they they should uh, be. Shit. Yeah, Shannon Morse is gonna be on our show next week. Yeah. Um. So, I have uh, I have this awkward um. Uh, it's not a it's not a it's an admiration it's an awkward admiration for women in tech and it's not like oh my god she's so hot even though Shannon Morse is very beautiful <laughs> it's just women in tech that are taking prominent positions and trying to share tech and, and owning their position in tech um mm-hmm. Veronica Belmont Shannon Morse Jen Cutter uh and these are just diamond club people it, they're just it, it, I'm amazed that in in because they're all, I think all of them, Molly Wood, I think all of them are a little bit younger than us. Sarah Lane. Sarah Lane. Uh, yeah. yeah. It, list goes on. Yeah. But it's in a, in a time when everybody's saying women aren't into tech and, and girls are, are doing, aren't doing math and, and we're finally getting girls into, into science. These women said, screw you. I like the tech stuff. I like reporting on it, playing with it, hacking it, doing whatever I'm going to do with it. And, and I'm not going to be shy about it. Yeah. And there's something and that's and that's the key because we it took women to get us on the freaking moon. Right. This is nothing new. Like the, <laughs> they're not pioneering the involvement with tech. They're pioneering the uh, Hey, look at me. I'm in the tech and I right. and I'm a chick. Yeah. Um that's what they're doing. They're 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 bringing attention to it and um I, yeah, I get man, I I totally with you with with my admiration for what they're doing uh yeah and, and yeah like it's so cool and to have shannon morse come on the show next week is just gonna be amazing um yep. it, it, it's gonna be one of the times when i'm, when I'm genuinely nervous on the show that'll, that'll yeah that, that's how that that's how that's gonna work uh it's kind of like uh episode 100 when we had scott johnson and tom Merritt both on our show <laughs> no pressure no pressure no pressure whatsoever <laughs> and also let's prolong this pressure that you may or may not have by the cubs game oh my the cubs god world series win yes. happening that night game and game seven at delay that. <laughs> oh my god that was the most drawn out I think I smoked half a pack of cigarettes waiting on that show to go live. <laughs> I, I think I smoked the other half a pack of your cigarettes because I wasn't even there, but I'm pretty sure that that's what happened. Oh, my God. That was crazy. Yeah, anyway, we're getting nuts. off track. Yeah, uh, um... Shannon Morse is our guest next week, and I can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, yep, and uh, you can... Uh, oh, sh- <clears throat> this is my new, my new uh, audio crutch. <clears throat> or vocal crutch. <laughs> Mine is just laughing nervously. Right, looking at me and <laughs> laughing nervously. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, All right, so, so here we go. Before so, we go into uh, hey, uh, we we do a video. <laughs> we, you can be found at twitch.tv slash Ritual Misery Podcast. You can find us on the interwebs, ritualmisery.com. It'd be really cool if we had a, a link on our ritualmisery.com that led over to twitch.tv slash Ritual Misery Podcast. That would be <laughs> fantastic. We should probably make that happen one day. Uh, 
<laughs> I might do that during the post show. Actually, Bi- Biocal says it's Sling Blade. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I like them French fried potatoes. Mm-hmm. I like them vocal uh, potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> We I should, like we, these local potatoes. Oh, yeah, man. how awesome would it be if you get to get uh, uh, Billy Bob Thornton on the podcast just to do that voice? Just <laughs> oh my god, I like the Rich and Misery podcast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Them idiots make me laugh. Mm-hmm. Oh, that would be a dream come true. Oh man, oh, that, my god. that would be amazing. Um, Anybody knows Billy Bob? Uh, yeah. us, <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Uh, hey man, where can people find you? Oh, geez. Check me out on Twitter at RM underscore Del Noche. I'm Del Noche pretty much everywhere else on the web uh, to include untapped. So if you're a beer person, uh, hit me up on there. I would love to read your reviews. What about you, man? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Ethan Kane. You can also follow the show on Twitter at Ritual Misery. You can cruise on by our website, ritualmisery.com, to find out all the glorious things we're doing uh, w- when they go public. And you can support. As soon as we put links up there. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> you can support the I'm show. I'm gonna make that happen. That's gonna happen tonight. You can support the show, Ritual uh, Patreon.com slash Ritual Misery. You can comment on any episodes we have, RitualMisery.reddit.com. And uh, we want to give a special thanks to. Let me hit the little button here. We want to give a special. special <laughs> Uh, so Kevin McLeod makes our music. Thank you, Kevin McLeod. <laughs> we love you, Kevin. <laughs> for me, for Ken, for all those in the chat room right now that have suffered through this, thank you. This has been your Virtual Misery Podcast. you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> I'm not sure we've ever had a collapse of a show quite as glorious as that. That's some of the most genuine belly laughter that I've ever had on this show, man. God damn, what the hell happened?